Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Pentab webinar on local climate action planning with Penn State and partners. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and begin shortly uh, in about five minutes, but in the meantime, if you could please uh, take a look at the trivia question. There on your right, how many Pennsylvania local governments have adopted a climate action plan since 2019? Try out the Q&A function and see if you could uh, take a guess, put your answer in the Q&A and we'll see if that works. Um, okay, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Uh, it looks like, as I said, two people have answered correctly. The um, trivia question, how many Pennsylvania local governments have adopted a local climate action plan since the program began in 2019? The correct answer is C. Uh, and you learn more exactly as to what that means, a local climate action plan, what all was involved in that, how the plans are created and adopted uh, as the presentation unfolds. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, First, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I wanted to remind everybody, uh, if you're new to Zoom uh, webinar format, all attendees are muted and your cameras are off. Uh, so we can't see you and we can't hear you. So the only way you could communicate is by submitting either a chat or um, preferably using the question and answer uh, button if you have any uh, questions that you would like us to to share with the speakers, we will field those and answer them. We're probably going to answer them at the, save them till the end of the presentation, unless it makes sense to kind of interject uh, as, as things progress. Um, if you have any questions at the end, you can, uh, you know, that, that haven't been answered or you think of something later, you can always reach out to us, uh, pentap at psu.edu. Uh, you can find us on the web and you can also view this webinar um, which is being recorded uh, on our website on demand. And uh, that will be also sent to you as a link, as a follow-up email, probably sometime next week. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. I will uh, start by introducing myself. My name is Krista Schneider, and I am a technical advisor for Pentap, and I represent Northeastern Pennsylvania. You could see the, um, the counties in blue there uh, on, your, uh, on your screen. And uh, I am based out of Penn State Hazleton campus. And I am joined today by my colleague, Heidi Shattuck, who is my counterpart for Northwest uh, Pennsylvania. And she represents the 11 counties that you see in green. And she is affiliated with the Penn State Barron campus uh, in Erie. So um, what is PENTAP? Um, those of you who, who may not be familiar with our organization, we are a state-funded, uh, state I mean, a statewide, statewide grant-funded organization, and we are housed within the Office of Industrial Partnerships at Penn State. And uh, we are charged with supporting Pennsylvania businesses, mostly focused on small to medium-sized manufacturers and uh, also startups. And uh, we, we, we also work with, um, you know, we work with, with others, we work with municipalities, we work with our local Commonwealth campuses uh, throughout the state, and okay. also with our regional economic development partners um, that uh, are, you know, scattered throughout those counties. We began our work over 50 years ago, and we are one of the first technical assistance programs in the country. So, uh, how do we do this? Uh, we, we, we achieve our mission um, basically through our work in two primary areas, one being energy and the environment. And by this, we, we do this by basically performing um, operational assessments for small to medium-sized manufacturers. Uh, we do this to help them identify energy savings and pollution prevention opportunities. You can see some of our services there on the left. We also... Uh, you know, work in the trying to advance innovation uh, throughout the state. And we do this by connecting uh, those businesses and industries with the resources of Penn State, whether they be the, the faculty, the research institutes, or students, uh, you know, anything that helps advance uh, the technologies or the processes uh, of those businesses by um, engaging with Penn State, we, we do that as well. 
So um, it, I thought it was, you know, it'd be important to mention here um, that our work aligns with basically nine of the 17 uh, sustainability, United Nations sustainability goals. You could see the, the one that is at the core of our service deals with industry innovation and infrastructure. And uh, our, our webinar today actually um, by hosting this webinar, we're actually um, helping achieve, you know, both climate action and sustainable cities and communities. Um, we're not achieving it, but ad advancing it. And so um, that's why we are hosting this webinar today. Uh, our impact, we measure it in several different ways. Um, you know, first being economic benefit, and that's typically, uh, or mostly I should say, through energy cost savings and uh, also uh, benefits that companies receive by working with us through the, the grants or rebates that they receive uh, for their energy savings. Uh, we also, uh, by, like today through this webinar, you know, we help in, um, educate folks um, throughout the state. Uh, we, we help engage students, as I mentioned, by working with uh, businesses and industry. Last year, we served 89 clients through uh, in 33 different county, counties throughout the Commonwealth, almost half of which actually were in environmental justice areas. And that means that, you know, those communities are disadvantaged, economically uh, disadvantaged. So uh, if you are interested in learning more about a PENTAP and the work that we do, you can contact any one of our six regional advisors. Uh, their names are listed there on the right. And uh, each of us are embedded in the communities that we serve. Um, and we, the reason that we're embedded in these regions really is to uh, better understand the issues that are important to the communities, to the businesses, and, uh, and to the local Commonwealth campuses uh, as well. So, um, you know, we, 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 know, we know our regions and, you know, we, we like to, to build our partnerships there. And uh, so feel, feel free to reach out. Uh, this information is also on our website uh, if you need it for reference. So before I, I start by introducing um, each of the speakers and, and kind of turning over the presentation to them, I just want to say thanks to, to them for, for taking the time to join us today. Um, we're going to start out with uh, Peter Buck and Brandy Robinson, who together co-direct the uh, local climate action program uh, at Penn State. Uh, Peter is the um, academic programs manager for the Sustainability Institute, and Brandy is an assistant professor in the Department of Energy and Mineral Engineering. Uh, so th they're going to they're going to speak first, and then we're going to move to uh, Guy McCumber, uh, who is the planning commissioner for the city of Meadville. And I wanna thank him for his time, sharing his insights today with his experience there in the city of Meadville. And then we're gonna let Pam Adams wrap things up. She is the uh, sustainability planner for the center, counter, center, center region council of governments. And so we are anxious to hear uh, her perspective on uh, the local climate action planning process. I would also like to thank uh, the Department of Environmental Protection for their leadership in creating this program and the continued role that they play in supporting its development. So a little bit more about Peter Buck, as you may um, infer from this image, it seems like he likes to be outside and uh, be on his bike. <laughs> so uh, in addition to that, uh, and in addition to co-directing uh, the, the LCAP program, uh, he manages, like I said, the academic programming for the, for the Sustainability Institute. And in this role, he, he basically integrates and institutionalizes sustainability into teaching and learning uh, across the university. Um, he's, he's taught and communicated extensively on these topics, um, both in, you know, in various types of media, whether they be um, you know, books, journals, podcasts, et cetera. He's um, very involved in this, in this way. He's also served in many leadership roles on uh, various um, organizations. Um, he's been chair of the Ferguson Township Board of Supervisors. He's been uh, a board member of the State College Area School District. Uh, he serves on his local watershed commission. And he's also been involved in, in various planning groups, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Environmental Resource Consortium, where he serves on the executive committee. And he's also been involved in the National Council 
on science and the environment. So uh, advisory board. So he's he's very involved in in very busy many different ways. Uh, Brandy Robinson, as I mentioned, is assistant teaching professor at uh, Penn State's Department of Energy and Mineral Engineering. And in this role, she teaches primarily uh, in its world campus online. She focuses on uh, policy uh, around an energy and sustainability, but also on uh, renewable energy and sustainability systems. And in, in, in addition to her teaching and advising, she also uh, is very involved in, um, in local government. She's been chair of the center region uh, currently serves as chair, sorry, of the Center Region's uh, Planning Agency Technical Advisory Group for the uh, implementation of their local climate action plan. And she's also served as the Ferguson Township Climate Action Committee uh, chairwoman, chairwoman. So together, these folks really know what they're talking about. Um, they've been intimately involved at all levels of uh, local climate action planning. Uh, program, you know, from various perspectives. And so uh, I'm going to turn it over to them and um, stop talking. So take it away, Peter and Brandy. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Krista. And um, so this is Peter. Uh, I do not sound like Brandy. Brandy is here, but I'll be giving most of the presentation. Hi, Brandy. Hi, everyone. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we really appreciate you, you being here today so that we can talk about the Local Climate Action Program. Uh, which is being newly administered through Penn State in a partnership of the Sustainability Institute and the Department of Mineral uh, Energy and Mineral Engineering. And um, we're just excited to be able to share with you uh, the work that we do, why we do the work that we're doing, some of how we do it, um, and the, the municipalities and counties that, that we've worked with to date. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So uh, these are the questions that we'll be answering uh, today. And um, you can read those yourself. I, I shared this, this picture here because it, it is, uh, well, as Krista said, I'm, a, I'm very much an outdoors person. I ride my bike. I spend a lot of time uh, hiking and, and running in the woods as well. And uh, off to the left there in that little green shirt, uh, that's my kiddo. Um, when he was uh, eight or nine years old. Um, that looks down on Bear Meadows, which is a very special place right here in central Pennsylvania. And, you know, Brandy and I really come to this work from a place of uh, like loving our homes and that ultimately this is a, this service, this leadership, it's teaching the coordination and collaboration that we hope to make possible for governments, schools, hospitals, businesses, any organization and any individual who wants to be involved that ultimately it's because we want where we live to be thriving, happy, healthy, wonderful places to be. And we all have connections to that, to that special place in our lives. Um, and that's how we teach this class, uh, the, this sequence of classes. And um, we ask our students actually to, to do their first assignment is with their municipal partner to understand the place where they live and the place that they love. So uh, if, if, if nothing else comes through, I, I hope that um, whatever we say helps you think about how you might make where you live a better, more wonderful place. Because um, climate change is a big doomy subject that we know very well, and uh, we don't want to be overwhelmed. Uh, we want to be as positive as we can be. So next slide. So uh, as, as uh, Krista said, Brandy and I have been involved with local climate action planning for quite some time. And several years ago, I, I worked with my board of supervisors to pass a uh, net zero greenhouse gas resolution in local government. And that created a whole set of processes that immediately um, I guess I could say that I roped Brandy into <laughs> it because she she and I just love to work together. And um, a lot of some of the things that are on the screen are right here in the center region or in center county and are examples of people working together to accomplish 
um, you know, not only greenhouse gas emissions reductions, uh, but also adaptation to climate change and the thing that we were just talking about, which is a healthy, thriving environment. So there's a lot of solar here, and that's because Peter loves solar. Um, that's just the kind of thing for me. Um, but you have the things that you love and, and the ways that you're going to make your business or your municipality, your county, your home, uh, what you want it to be. And there are ways to plan for that. And that's, that's ultimately what we're looking at. How do we, how do we plan for that? So next slide. Um, so in a, a few years ago, Heidi Kunch at the uh, Department of Environmental Protection uh, initiated this program, the Local Climate Action Program. And its goal was for a municipality of really any size or a county to conduct a greenhouse gas inventory. So determine the greenhouse gas emissions from within its boundaries in transportation, commercial energy, industrial um, emissions, residential energy, transportation, agriculture, water, wastewater, waste, all these different sectors, determine what those are, get them into an inventory that can be communicated to uh, a board of leaders, and then initiate and hopefully complete a climate action and adaptation plan, mostly focused on the, um, the action portion, the, the mitigation or drawing down of greenhouse gas gases within that um, municipal or county boundary. So it was to count everything and then determine how to reduce those numbers to ultimately lessen the impact of greenhouse gases on the atmosphere and deal with the global problem of climate change. Um, the way this would happen would be that faculty and students at colleges and universities across the Commonwealth, we have many, 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 many colleges and universities in Pennsylvania. Um, I believe the most in the union uh, because we have all these little tiny colleges all over the place, right? And then we have a mega university like Penn State and many in between. Um, so faculty and students would, for uh, one academic year, work on, work on these. And that's how it was conducted for three years. And now it's in its fourth year and Brandy and I run it solely at Penn State. And the format is about the same. And we'll talk about who some of those partners were previously and how we're going to change it. But that's ultimately it was set up, uh, or it was originally set up by Heidi Kunch in the Department of Environmental Protection for those goals um, using that method. Next slide. Now, <clears throat> some of us might be wondering, well, why would you even really actually be going about initiating this program? And for some of you, maybe it's a no-brainer. Um, there are, uh, you know, a lot of us might be paying attention to the news and we say, oh, there are these wildfires or there are increased storm intensity or, you know, this thing and that thing and the impacts um, that we're seeing. But we, we might not be paying attention to the way that different organizations around the world in the United States and in Pennsylvania are looking at the issue. Every year, the World Economic Forum does a risk assessment. These are governmental, non-governmental, and business leaders from across the world. Hundreds, uh, I believe there are a couple of thousand of them. And there's a rather famous um, or infamous, depending on how you view it, meeting every year in Davos, Switzerland, where they come together. They have a, the World Economic Forum meeting. And part of its annual work now is this global risk report. And in the last five years, the most severe risks to the global economy, as assessed through an extensive survey and interview process, the, the top risks on a global scale over the next 10 years are climate action failure, extreme weather, and biodiversity loss. 
all three of those are climate related uh, and had been until recently seen as being purely quote unquote environmental. Um, the World Economic Forum is not alone in making this risk assessment. Can you go to the next slide? The United States Air Force just released its climate action plan. And for a number of years, the United States military, the Department of Defense, through its Quadrennial Defense Review and um, other reports, has called climate change a, quote, threat multiplier, meaning that uh, when it touches something, and the good news and bad news about climate change, as Brandy likes to say, is that it touches basically everything. So it touches something the chance that whatever it has touched becomes more of a risk or a threat, it goes up. The US military has also called climate change an accelerant of risk. So the United States Air Force, which is one of the largest consumers of fuel in the world, uh, using as much fuel as a nation like Denmark, uh, says, hmm, how are we going to draw down emissions on the one hand, so that we reduce those long-term risks that come from things like migration caused by protracted or acute temporary uh, natural disasters and maintain uh, readiness to deploy to um, whatever battle arena they would need to. So the US Air Force, uh, hardly a group of um, greenies, I would say, uh, takes this very seriously and has both an action and adaptation plan. Uh, next slide. Now, because Pentab works with businesses, um, there is a, an increasing and accelerating case for businesses to be involved in all kinds of ways. And the Business Roundtable in 2020 published a short um, guide uh, related to business and public policy. And um, so among these, uh, among their key principles here are to align policy goals, right? We want some market certainty out there. Uh, they, uh, of course, being that it's private business, encourage market-based solutions to climate change, um, to preserve competitiveness of American business in in the global marketplace, to support public and private investments both. So these are not either ors, these are seen as, as being, we hope, cooperative, and certainly Brandy and I uh, share that. And then to ensure that uh, US policies support international goals. So there's been, since the passage of the Paris Agreement in 2015, there is, um, the United States and the other nations of the world have what are called nationally determined contributions uh, to um, the carbon budget. And if anyone really wants to talk about the carbon budget, we can do that later. But what the total, what the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions are that enter the atmosphere from each nation. And so part of what we do with our students and we do ourselves is we think about each municipality as a little piece of the United States and their greenhouse gas inventory and their plan becomes part of the counting of the nationally determined contribution of the United States and then the way that that local municipality participates in doing its part to bring down the nationally determined contribution. And you know, we are in, a, we're in a market-based economy um, uh, with a pretty free market. And so we have to work with business. And so we are, you know, eager for you to be involved either in our program or to partner with previous municipalities. So go to the next slide, please. In Pennsylvania, we can talk endlessly um, about the impacts on, on Pennsylvania from climate change. And there are good fact sheets from the EPA, from the National Resources, the Natural Resources Defense Council. There are a number of them out there about the impacts of climate change on Pennsylvania. Uh, flooding, Lyme disease, um, 
uh, increased heat stress, et cetera, et cetera. But we do also have a state level climate action plan put together uh, through the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. And Pennsylvania also has a, uh, a stated greenhouse gas emissions reduction goal of 80% by 2050. And that was uh, signed uh, into an executive order by Governor Wolf in uh, 2019. Next slide. So one of the things that we know about Pennsylvania and you all live here, we have 2,560 municipalities. That's totally crazy. Um, that's just a wild number out there, 2,560. And they go from a first class city like Philadelphia, right down to uh, a municipality like we're working with right now, Wormleysburg over in Eastern Cumberland County with just over 3,000 people. And there are some that are smaller than that. There are municipalities with fewer than 1,000 people in Pennsylvania. So we have a lot of different municipalities. And so that's a, that's a challenge, um, but they all have a role that they can play. Next slide. Right? We also have, uh, according to the US Census Bureau, about 302,000 businesses in Pennsylvania with total employment numbers listed there, total annual payroll, by the way, that is in thousands of dollars. So I believe that's $294 billion, right? We have a lot of businesses and they're operating in, in and across those municipalities. So business clearly is everywhere and needs to be a part of our solution. We're so glad that Pentap is here to help them um, because by working together, we, we might be able to work together better on climate change. Next slide. So back, back to this. So, so this is, I've just talked through some of the context of the work that we do. And now Penn State has taken this, this program on and it's pretty similar to what it's been before, but we're doing some slight modifications. So next slide. Oop. Sorry, these are the previous LCAP. Nope, you can go to the next one. These are the previous LCAP participants. And that is a, there's a lot of numbers on, or a lot of letters on there. So I'm glad that, that you'll, um, that we'll have these slides, but um, there are, there are about 50 that have gone through so far. Next slide. These are our, uh, our participants from this year, and they range from, like I said, little Wormleysburg, right, all the way up to Bucks County, which is 650,000 people. So just over 3,000 up to 650,000. And all told, it's just under a million people who live within the boundaries of these municipalities and counties. Next slide. So what are we gonna be doing? What are we doing now? How will it change? Next slide. So the current model was that semester one in the fall, it was a greenhouse gas inventory. Semester two, make a climate action plan. Well, uh, Brandy and I have worked with Pam Adams, who you'll hear from later. And things don't always happen exactly this way. And, and university semester schedules do not align with all of the things that happen in municipal government or in business. And so we're taking a slightly more, I guess I would say flexible, mm -hmm way of taking this on. So the first semester, we do work toward that greenhouse gas inventory, getting that finished. And I think that most of our students will get yeah. most or all of one finished. Uh, but knowing that sometimes data from this place and that place, you know, that can be hard and it, it just doesn't fit within a semester schedule. So we're a little bit flexible there, but they will deliver um, those benchmarks to a municipality. And then, in the second semester, instead of saying, you have to do a complete climate and action adaptation plan that's in a nice neat document, that 19 of them, so that's the answer to the trivia question, 19 of them have been done before. That's a bunch that are, have not been ratified and some are probably sitting on a shelf. There may be other things that can happen, right? partnership possibilities or changes to ordinances or advice on, you know, for a municipal or metropolitan planning organization. There, there's a, there are a whole range of things that we know our students can work on that are different, but it provides the CAP framework. So it works within the framework and provides engagement 
for our municipal partners. And it's not just number crunching. Okay, next slide. So our students get real world transferable skills in greenhouse gas accounting, they get to engage with stakeholders in municipal government, and they also are going to be doing very applied action oriented work. That is so good for them and it pre prepares them professionally. And they also get a, a really good sense of, I mean, how, how work life in, in this arena goes. Our, our municipal partners um, get benchmarks that they need in order to take action. They have a roadmap for action opportunities that they can work on with someone right then and carry on into the future. And they, um, with the community engagement aspect, they can learn more about their communities where this issue is concerned. Next slide. Now, business um, is, it, it can be very much a part of these plans and it has to be a part of these plans. And I'm pointing to this one from Chester County because they have quite a bit in there about collaboration with business. If you look in a number of the plans, business as part of the solution is all over the place. If, um, if you live in or are active in one of these communities, please uh, have a look at the plan and engage with your municipal partner or reach out to Brandy and me. Um, we're happy to, to talk with you um, uh, about that because, we, because business is, is such a part of the solution, either through its own operations or through its collaborations, right? Um, next slide. So um, we, we just wanna thank you again. Uh, the, the local climate action program is here for the citizens of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That is why we are here to help do our part to make it a better place to live. Um, our emails are here. We're here to answer questions at the end and um, we hope to hear from you. And without further ado, I believe you'll go on to Guy. Thank you, Peter. Uh, yes, we will continue uh, to hear more about uh, local climate action plans from Guy. Uh, Guy McCumber uh, serves as the planning commissioner for the city of Meadville, and he'll be speaking you know, directly about his experience with his community's uh, plan. And um, he is uh, going to, uh, Guy, would you like me to uh, forward the slide? Yes, please. I'm kind of ashamed of being a Pirates fan. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak today. And uh, I, I have to say that I was frankly thrilled when I heard that Penn State and, and PennTap were involved in this program because um, I've, I've worked for over 40 years in the field and I've always found them to be tremendous resources and they'll be a tremendous resource in this program too. And that's one of, I think one of the takeaways from this is that th this program takes a lot of a lot of resources, people resources, technical resources. And so uh, I, I commend Penn State and PennTap for being involved. Uh, this slide here, um, we've used this slide. So it's a very powerful slide. Uh, one of the reasons I'm involved with this program is I have, I'm dating myself, I have five young grandchildren. And so I think this represents uh, obviously the, the passing the future to them. But this also represents people power. And another takeaway from our program that I'd like to convey to you is that uh, our city is financially strapped, personnel strapped. And so it's really gonna come down to volunteers from the community doing this work. Next slide, please. And related to this, we have had a, a task force. This is a shout out to our task force. I was technically the chairman of the task force, but our, my friends here did a lot of this work. Uh, several of these people you'll note are from Allegheny College. We have the college uh, in our community, right in our community. And I've worked with, with their uh, environmental science program for many years. And that was one of the reasons why I felt comfortable doing this program, being involved was I knew that Allegheny would be a great resource. But interestingly, uh, and another takeaway here is that uh, you need people with passion for this work, obviously. And we have one of the people on this list you'll see is Ju Julia Ludwig. She's actually a German professor from Allegheny College uh, and she lives in Berlin and she gave a great perspective of when, what they're doing in Germany. For, for instance, Berlin is actually going to a, nar, a no car zone in their downtown area. So I guess the point here is that, it, you know, as long as you have people with passion, they don't necessarily have to have an environmental background. That obviously helps, but it really takes people that are willing to do the work. Okay, the other thing I was gonna mention about our task force was that we actually met on a bi-weekly basis for over a year. 
So that's a tremendous commitment. Uh, it, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work at the front end, but I can tell you there's more work on the back end to actually obviously implement it. Uh, from our, our outreach efforts, a point I want to make with this is that uh, we re reviewed some other plans that I, we thought were frankly thin on outreach, and we really made an effort to really uh, communicate with the community. And the main reasons for this, obviously, is to get input for the plan, but also it's an opportunity to recruit people for implementation, uh, because that's, that's where the majority of the work is going to come, is actually in implementing the plan. And so that's very important. But this was also very important to give people basic education about uh, about the plan and what we were trying to do. So when we go back, at least they'll be oriented. And we, you know, again, we did this. We had we had our biweekly task force meetings. But on top of that, we had all these other meetings. But I think it was very worthwhile in the end. In the uh, in the end. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, I'm. I'm kind of trying to encapsulate a, about an 80 page document here, but basically uh, these are the precepts of our plan, education, engagement, equity, and economy. And what they mean, just to go over it briefly, education, this is a mainly an educational effort because uh, there's, we found that a lot of people just, you know, they don't think how does climate change apply to a place like Meadville, PA? And we have to convince them that it's important to Meadville. And another reason is that uh, it, everybody uses energy. You know, and a lot of people associate climate change with just cars, and it's much more than that, obviously. I think we all know that. So it is a major educational effort. Engagement, what we really mean there is that, again, our city is has very limited resources. We love our city, but I mean, the city itself, personnel, just can't, couldn't do this. And so it's really going to take people power to do this. Equity, the point there is that the people that are most vulnerable to climate change are the people furthest down the economic ladder. Uh, we have that in Meadville. We've seen people people in low income area, areas been flooded. Uh, obviously, there's the heat issue and there's a health risk associated with that. And so that's one of our fundamental principles is for people to understand that when we're talking about it. And economy, again, this relates to trying to make it economical for the city uh, through uh, volunteer work, grants. I mean, the city is going to have some involvement, but we're really going to try to do this on a, on a no cost or cost neutral basis as much as possible. Uh, next slide, please. There's a lot of talk these days about net zero carbon, net zero emissions. Uh, we decided to go with this because uh, other communities have already been down this road. And this is not, this isn't necessarily mainstream thinking now, but it's it's been proven. And that's another reason to engage in climate action planning is that the, the field is really advanced. Uh, I've been involved in environmental work for 40 years and I saw where climate action planning was new maybe 20 years ago, but there's, there's communities now, cities now that are on their second, third iterations of their climate action plans. So there's really a lot of good empirical information, uh, tested information. And so that was one of the reasons that we were comfortable in committing to net zero carbon. And you know, if you parse it out, basically it does come out to about 4% reduction per year, which is still pretty significant, but that's why we went to that, that goal. Next slide, please. So our implementation strategy, uh, if you could advance that, Krista, please. So how are we going to do it? Um, one of our main, and again, I'm, we're, I'm kind of, you know, uh, summarizing a, a long document, but basically what we decided to do was to recommend to the city that they develop an Envir environmental advisory council. And the reason for that was that the city already has, uh, I'm not sure, at least somewhere about a dozen or so agencies like authorities and stuff like that and you know the city actually said you know why should we develop another entity uh i you know we basically convinced the city that uh this was really necessary to really do this work it was not appropriate to give it to an organization that already had a a, a a pretty ambitious mission nothing against our different authorities and things like that and we were thrilled that the city was actually willing to do this and we actually had our first meeting yesterday, and I'm thrilled to say that we have some awesome people on our environmental advisory, we actually, it's the environmental advisory committee, and so it's really going to be a, a great team. Uh, another point is that we're going to collaborate with existing organizations. Obviously, we're not trying to reinvent the world or, 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 or whatever, but there's some small organizations that 
are out there at every community that uh, you can support in doing climate action work. And we're gonna do that. We've named a couple here. Uh, like I said before, we're going to give a priority to grant funding and writing. And this is all very serendipitous because we developed our, our plan, started our plan before the, uh, the federal government really, a lot of you realize now that the federal government has, has created a lot of programs to support climate action work. And so uh, I think that was very fortuitous to start this. And so we have one, one of the challenges if you're going to be to find out what these funding sources are and how they apply to Meadville PA. Um, as far as partnership, uh, I was involved in actually the Erie 2030 uh, program, which is a, a, a national, actually a global energy efficiency program to reduce climate change. And uh, I think part of the program we're going to try to do is to actually develop partnerships with organizations, have them sign a partnership agreement to actually participate. Uh, because I think when people do that and make that public commitment, I think that'll help ensure that things happen down the road. Uh, metrics, uh, you know, we think that metrics, obviously, um, greenhouse gas numbers and things like that are very important, but I think it's just important to stress other accomplishments, communities doing a partnership or organizations do the partnership and stuff like that, because overall, this is really going to be a big education program. I mean, there are tremendous resources out there to do retrofits and stuff like that, but you have to get people to that point. And so, you know, for the first couple of years, a really big focus is going to be education um, through through publicity. We we built in the plan actually has an awards program, uh, be, and that might seem like superfluous to some people or things like that, but I think that's going to be very important because it'll help us and educate. Uh, if we can get into the newspaper and in, in Meadville, PA, the newspaper still has a lot of clouds uh, and reach for the community. And we think through doing education through our awards program and other publicity highlighting programs, efforts, things like that, that uh, that'll really help us implement the plan. Uh, and with that, uh, I'm done and I'll turn it over to Pam. Well, thank, thank you, Guy. I, I appreciate that. That was an excellent presentation. This is Krista Still. I wanted to go ahead quickly and just um, introduce Pam before she starts speaking. Uh, Pam Adams uh, is the sustainability planner at the Center Region Council of Governments. Um, and just very quickly, that's uh, she's basically responsible for everything, uh, preparing, monitoring, coordinating, everything associated with um, implementation of their climate action and adaptation plan for the for the region. So she works with um, municipalities, she works with other councils of governments, other stakeholders, uh, and in this role, she she really um, you know assists with the policies and and and, and tries to, to move that forward. So she's also I should mention a Penn State graduate. So take it away, Pam. Go Penn State. So what I would like to say first um, is one of the greatest benefits of participating in the LCAP, of which we did in uh, year one, 2019, is even being here today and learning about what Meadville's doing and recognizing that they're about in the same place that we are and sharing and learning from each other. So I, I just, listening to Guy made me just wanna point that out. Um, but to our little um, example of what we're working on, first I'll just say that I work for a council of governments, which is not another layer of government, but provides shared services to six of those over 2000 municipalities in Pennsylvania. So six municipalities in Center County, that's where we're located. Um, and like I said, we participated in year one. It took us two years to get to a complete plan, but um, our 32 elected officials from those six municipalities did approve and adopt our action plan for the region um, in November of 2021, so last fall. So we are in that implementation mode of trying to um, figure way that the best way to move forward. Our plan does this high level assessment of our vulnerabilities and it also talks about um, and does an inventory for our greenhouse gas emissions so we have a baseline to start um, measuring our progress forward. The bulk of the plan does include over 80 actions um, that we broke into these six different sectors. And I'll point out the reason for the plan from the um, elected officials who wanted to have this plan, um, who hired a sustainability planner in 2018, um, is because they're feeling the impacts 
There's been road damage in our community from extreme weather. There's more power outages. So that becomes a safety, a cost, and a disruption to our community members. Um, there's also public health concerns that were rising um, and be coming to the forefront that are related to the changing climate. And then the public, there's been a lot of advocacy in our community um, for planning and taking action. So next slide. And as Guy said, this is not something one person could do or even one little group, but it's going to take a whole community, a village, if you want to say. And the way we're structured at the COG, Council of Governments, is by committee. On the left <clears throat> are the elected officials for the Climate Action and Sustainability Committee. COG every month has um, committee meetings, and at the end of the month, the, all the committees meet together. It's called the General Forum. But on the left, you can see we have elected officials. And this committee was formed or reformed. COG sort of adjusted and um, amended some of their committee structure, um, began meeting monthly in 2020. And it consists of six municipality representatives that are shown at the top there. But we also have representatives from Penn State and the school district, recognizing that they're a very significant part of our community um, and should be part of the discussion. On the right, we have the technical advisory group. Um, this is actually group number two. The first group was um, put together to help the policymakers with the techno aspects of developing and creating the plan. This technical advisory group we call TAG um, is helping with the implementation phase. And you might notice that Peter and Brandy are on this tag. They were also on the first tag. And it's been really um, great and um, important to have that Penn State relationship and coalition going on there. Next slide. So we did a greenhouse gas emissions inventory. That's part of the LCAP. That's one of the first things that you do. Um, and they walk you through that. So it's very helpful. Um, and I put this slide up here for two reasons. We had the, the student and the LCAP program helping us create our inventory, which is very key to understand where your emissions are coming from. You can see most of ours are coming from the operation, heating, cooling of our buildings, but we also have transportation. Um, and then solid waste agriculture for our community was important. So we added that as an um, additional thing to track and start looking at as far as the emissions that come from agriculture and then, then water. Um, I also will point out here that a student is the one who created this infographic for me. So again, using the resources that are available to you to maximize your benefits is what, what I really wanna point out about LCAP helping you connect with um, resources that is beneficial to the student and very beneficial to us. Next slide. So as I mentioned, it took us two years to create our climate action and adaptation plan, and it was during COVID, but we um, did want to try to do a, a good amount of public engagement. So basically for a year, we worked um, to try to engage the public. We certainly did not reach everyone, and we're still working on um, making those, those connections. But we worked with over 70 subject matter experts um, trying to identify best practices. Um, a lot of those subject matter experts came from Penn State, but we worked also with our nonprofits in our community um, and other statewide organizations. We got information from municipal um, committees, elected officials, um, as well as then we had a big push to get public input. We did a survey, which uh, had student helping on the survey. We did a public forum where we had over 150 people attend a virtual survey, um, and we had breakout rooms of which a class and students facilitated that whole process. And the majority of those 150 attendees all left their screens on, and it was a very um, engaging forum. So this part of public engagement could not have happened without student and, I would say, the, the Penn State people helping with this process, but it was very key to getting our climate action and adaptation plan adopted. Next slide. And then I'll just leave you with the, the main takeaways. When we talk about our, our plan and why we're doing it, we always lead with why this matters to the region. We talk about 
what impacts we're feeling and experiencing locally so that we can make sure people understand this, this matters to them and we try to listen to why it might matter to them. In the our plan, um, after we talk about why we're doing this, we also then talk a lot about the co-benefits and Peter mentioned those economic prosperity, job creation type of opportunities that we believe a lot of the actions in our plan um, can lead towards. Um, we also know that fostering resource security is important. So we've identified and kind of for each action listed what the additional co-benefits are of doing this action. And I really think that it's important and it's worth the time to engage with the community because at the end, your elected officials are more um, comfortable understanding that this is something that has the community um, approval for, but it is very important to not just only focus on your, your community. Um, we definitely had experiences where it's just as important to talk to your elected officials and make sure they understand everything that is going into the plan and the process. And then finally, back to those um, United Nation develop, Sustainable Development Goals, partnerships are really key to making the implementation of an action plan um, possible. They're going to be key for greater participation, building consensus, and really it's important to find the alignment with other organizations because what you'll be surprised about is there is a lot of alignment where we're all working towards a similar goal and that's where it's really powerful and, and meaningful. And I believe that is the end of my presentation. Well, that, that was great, Pam. Thank you so much. Uh, that was an excellent presentation as well. Uh, we have a few minutes left to uh, field some questions. Um, there's one uh, that's been added to the Q&A that I'll, I'll read off here. And this one for you, uh, this one for, is for Guy. Um, Guy, can you give some examples of publicity efforts you have used? Um, we've considered things like a solar powered sign. Um, we wanna hear what you have tried. Well, I mean, we haven't actually started um, our Olympic imitation phase, but as far as like publicity for the, the uh, climate action plan development, I mean, we had some, some um, public meetings. Um, we, 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 tried to, we tried to do them in downtown locations, you know, rather than nothing against city hall, but I mean, to, to, to meet people where they were kind of thing. Uh, but I think it was also valuable that we tried to do outreach at community events. Uh, I mean, climate change apl applies to everybody. And we were at our county fair. We have a couple of events in, in downtown Meadville, uh, second Saturday, which is a, uh, it's really focused on uh, children and uh, activities and stuff like that. And obviously children are, are involved with this are potentially impacted down the road. So I think that was a key too, was that we tried to really do outreach at, at community events where, that weren't necessarily associated with climate change. And, 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 and for the most part, uh, people embrace that. We did do a few presentations um, and maybe my colleagues, uh, I'm probably forgetting things, but I think those were the main things that we did. Great, thank you, Guy. Um, we have another question here. Uh, and I'll, I guess this is really more, maybe more for, for Peter and Brandy. Uh, does participation in Penn State's LCAP program rely on local college participation? What if you can't get buy-in by your local college? You want me to take that one? Yeah, yeah, okay. go ahead, Brandy. Hi, everyone, this is Brandy. So the way that we've done it this year and the way that I assume that we will do this next year is that we have enough Penn State students who are interested in doing this that we've been able to support all, well, we're supporting 10 of the municipalities with 14 students. Some of the bigger jurisdictions, we have uh, student teams of two working on with Penn State students. One exception to this, is East Fallowfield Township. So they already had developed a partnership with a student at Westchester University. And so um, that student is kind of enrolled as a guest in the class. He's not taking the class for credit at Penn State, but I had granted him access to everything so that he could kind of follow along and see. I just don't grade anything for him. His advisor at Westchester does all of that. Um, 
so our plan is to do that next semester. We have, or next year as well, we have, um, we have a mix of undergrads and grads. Mm -hmm. And um, right now this year, we have University Park students as well as World Campus students. And what, uh, because most of my teaching and advising is in a World Campus program in energy and sustainability policy. And I really wanted to, to allow those students to participate in this. And what's been kind of interesting is that, um, surprising to me, all of our students, all of our world campus students, but one are in Pennsylvania and many of them are within a reasonable drive of their municipality. So they have been working in person. So we have pretty good reach mm -hmm. longer term. I don't think I'll be able to sort this out for next year, but longer term, I, I, I want to figure out how to bring other universities and faculty back into this because I don't think this is something that should just be Penn State you know, I think this is something we all should be working on. And there are a lot of really talented faculty and students at other places that, that we should be um, tapping into. But it's not the responsibility of an LCAP participant to find their own student to work on that. I'll, I'll do that. That's right. Thank you. Uh, that, was, that was a great question. Um, I, I see there's another one here. So, and you know, when is the application for next year open? And I guess that leads to, you know, how, how do communities, how do even students, if they want to get involved, um, say they're at a Commonwealth campus or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and they want to get involved, how would, how would they go about doing that? How would a community um, start the process of engagement? Well, right now we do not have anything very elaborate or fancy set up for that. So the answer is to email me at brobinson at psu.edu. Um, we are happily accepting applicants for next year's cohort already, both um, in terms of municipal partners and students. I welcome students from any of the Penn State campuses. And similarly, like I said, if, if you as a municipal partner have a working relationship with a faculty member at another institution, let's talk about that. I mean, there, like I said, there's there's nothing particularly special that means we should own this. So we want to open this up to, to everyone that we can. Um, the more of us working on this, the better. Uh, so yeah, just drop me an email if you're interested in participating next year. We do need to really get some sort of like web presence or something, but yeah. We yes. haven't done that yet. We're all, we're working on it. Yeah, yeah. We we ended up. Um, this I hope this doesn't sound like an excuse. We adopted the the program um, later yeah. than was feasible to do all of the bell and whistle development that that we want to have. Um, so in the in the coming several months, there will be the full web presence and whatnot. But as Brandy said, you know, email her at brobinson at psu edu. Um, uh, we're happy to get on Zoom calls or phone calls um, to talk with you. If you're if you're a business and you are interested in collaborating with a municipal partner in some way, that's another thing that we would really welcome. At the end of the day, Penn State is huge and has a lot. We have a lot of distributed expertise uh, across our colleges and across our Commonwealth campuses. And we also play a very active role in a statewide organization, the Pennsylvania Environmental Resource Consortium. So um, like we're the elephant, ride the elephant, right? <laughs> right, and just use the elephant for what it's good at doing, which is like being big, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hopefully wise also. That's, that's great, and I agree with you, yes. T take advantage of, of Penn State's resources that's what we're here for at Pentap. Um, and if you don't know where to begin, you know, you heard this presentation, but you don't know, or even if you're watching it later, um, you know, in the recorded mode, and you just don't know where to begin, just reach out to um, me, uh, Heidi, one of the other advisors in your region, and uh, we'll we'll get you connected with um, with whatever you need. So please reach out and. Uh, with that, I guess it's it's 12 o'clock and we're out of time. So I just want to thank uh, our speakers again. Thank you so much for your time, for your uh, thoughtful um, participation in this discussion. Uh, and 
thanks to uh, everybody who participated and joined and uh, enjoy your lunch have the rest have a great rest of the day and uh, yeah thank you for thank you for joining us thank you thank you all right take care thank you